Jim Johnson's a pretty normal guy ordinarily, but lately he's been acting very strange. Mine seems to be a million miles away. Mrs. Johnson and Judy are getting worried about him. Last night, for example, he turned down a piece of his favorite pie. The other day, he even kicked that car he's always been so proud of. And is always writing figures of some kind on the backs of envelopes. No, this isn't like Jim at all. There must be something wrong. That magazine he was looking at, maybe that's a clue. Yes, that's the answer. Surprised you didn't guess, aren't you? Well, there's only one thing to do, only one cure. And Mrs. Johnson is wise enough to know it. She knows the only medicine for this condition in the American male is this. The gleam of new chrome, the sparkle of new paint, and that wonderful perfume that only comes from a new car. Yes, it's a familiar scene, one that's played every day all over America. And we're all better off because of it. You see, that beautiful new car and the way Jim Johnson feels about it are the symbols of a constant desire for something newer and better that is typical of all the Johnson families across the nation. And the competitive drive to satisfy that desire, to build that better mousetrap, is the force that has made the American marketplace the most abundant in the world. We in the automobile industry know the story. We helped write it. Under the spur of competition, of having to come up with something newer and better every year, the automobile industry has pointed the way for our whole economy, not only in mass production methods, but in long-range thinking and planning. Yes, forward product planning, putting in our showrooms the kind of cars and trucks and tractors that Jim Johnson and millions of people like him want and can buy is one of our biggest, toughest, and most important jobs here at Ford Motor Company. It's a tremendously complex job. It means getting the right answers to literally thousands of questions and interpreting them into a ton and a half of steel and glass and chrome. It's a job for experts, lots of them. It's a job that takes time and money, too. You don't put together a magnificent machine like this overnight. You don't plan and style and design and tool and build an automotive vehicle in a matter of months. Actually, years before Jim Johnson came into the showroom, this car was conceived in the minds of men at Ford Motor Company. This is how it happens. This is the story of product planning. Specifically, starting to develop the basic objectives for the advanced vehicle is the job of product planning personnel in the divisions. But planning a new vehicle is not simply dreaming up something that looks like a rocket on wheels and then manufacturing it. Even to decide the weight and general dimensions and specifications of the vehicle takes months of gathering data and analyzing them. Suppose you were starting out to plan a car or truck or tractor to put on the market four years from today. You'd need the answers to a good many questions before you attempt to do style and design that vehicle. These men get those answers. Market? Yes, a big question, made up of thousands of smaller questions. What part of the market are we after? What share of the market are we trying to reach with this particular vehicle? Do we want to extend that? What kind of total automotive market will we have four, six, eight years from now? How many American families like the Johnsons will decide to buy a new car? What will they pay for it? And finally, most important, how many of them can we expect to buy Ford products? What part of that total market will go to Ford, to Lincoln, to Mercury? What share of the truck market should be Ford's? What share of the tractor market? Of course, saying it doesn't make it so. No share of this future market will be ours unless we earn it unless we put into that market a vehicle that will sell. That means more questions, more answers to be found. What kind of a car will get us the share we want of the future market? What features? What performance? What size? There's only one person who knows, the customer. So let's find out what he expects to get in his car or truck or tractor. 
what will the customer want? The best way, of course, is the most obvious. Ask him. Go into his home and ask him. Take the product to him and ask him. Talk to him on the telephone and ask him. Visit him on the job and ask him. Send him a questionnaire and ask him. What does the dealer council say? The dealer councils, elected representatives of Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealers all over America, meet with product and salespeople regularly to discuss our products. They get the answers where it counts most, on the sales floor, where the difference between success and failure is the customer's reaction to the car or truck or tractor we have produced. The dealer councils tell us how our present models are being accepted, where improvements might be made, what features the customer is interested in, what kind of performance he expects. And now the product division is ready for the big day. Gentlemen, our division would like to present today our proposed program for the Ford car line to be introduced in 50 Now it's up to the product planning committee. Is this the vehicle we want to offer to the public in 1950X? Here in this meeting, a decision will be made, a direction taken. Changes will be made, certainly. Suggestions offered. But for all practical purposes, here will be decided what the car or truck or tractor of three years from now will be. And the amazing part of it is this. Not a single line has been styled, not a single model has been made. No one knows at this moment of decision what this vehicle will look like. When the vehicle program has been approved, it becomes the job of our engineering staff to fill in the skeleton of the package with steel and chrome and fabric and rubber and glass. Now actual styling and design can start. From the stockpile of ideas and concepts and shapes. From the creative minds of Ford stylists and engineers. From the developmental programs constantly in progress, our future vehicle begins to take shape around the package. Package dimensions are translated into styling trends. Lines and forms and contours, both functional and pleasing to the eye. From hundreds of sketches, dozens of ideas are rendered from which the product planning committee, with recommendations by the vehicle division, will choose a styling direction. idea here, a line there, this fender contour, that windshield, a seating buck, the interior dimensions interpreted physically, comfort, convenience, roominess made certain, visibility and safety checked out. Then three-eighth size clay models. The vehicle begins to take on three dimensions. How does it look now, with depth? At the same time, intensive work going on in development and design of vehicle components. Engines, chassis components, transmissions, body and electrical components. Checks with manufacturing engineering. Plastic models used to make certain the styling and arrangement are feasible for manufacture. Changes suggested to save time in fabricating, machining, assembling. Full-size clay models made. Exterior surfaces approaching their final form. Front end and grille finalized. Trim combinations, colors and fabrics presented. The best of them chosen. And all the time, testing going on in engineering. Thousands of hours in the laboratory. Thousands of miles on the road. Performance and durability and safety tests for every basic component. The months are flying by now. The introductory dates are getting closer. We're fighting time every step of the way. Time and cost. And regular reports are being made to the committee on the progress of the program. In engineering, they're starting to put together the prototypes of the vehicle. Handmade jobs from the bottom up. Then more testing, more modification and improvement.
Advanced information prints go out to manufacturing and purchasing so that equipment and facilities can be planned. Sources lined up for tools and dyes and purchased materials. And finally, we've reached the end. The program started more than four years before reaches its culmination. We're ready to roll job number one off our assembly line. Yes, we've done a good job this time. We've styled and designed and built the car that Jim Johnson and thousands like him wanted. But we don't stop there. We can't. If you stand still in this business, you go backward. We're already developing our objectives for the vehicle he'll want four years from now. Determining package dimensions and specifications for the car he'll buy three years from now. Finalizing the styling he'll admire two years from now. And the car he'll drive next year is already being tooled up and prototypes are being tested. It never stops. That's product planning at Ford. A long look into the future with but a single objective, leadership in car styling, in car performance, in car ownership. And always better tomorrow on the American road.